Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's Not Me and with a very disproportionate board to my size ratio, I'm back with another video to make anatomy a piece of cake. So guys, do not forget to subscribe to my channel. The link of my Instagram is in the description because I do interactive sessions. You can DM me, we can have a conversation to help you study anatomy in a more easy way. So today we are discussing the ninth nerve. This is one of the cranial nerves. It is known as the glossopharyngeal nerve. I'm sure you all are familiar with it. Today, I'm only going to give you a brief overview of the new course of uh, ninth cranial nerve so if any of you has been feeling like cranial nerves is actually messing their mind you have come to the right place let's start discussing how the glossopharyngeal nerve begins i just want you to remember one thing 9 sp can you remember that little mnemonic 9 sp because ninth cranial nerve is always going to supply one and only one muscle known as sp the stylopharyngeus muscle i want you to put that in your head and now let's talk about how the glossopharyngeal nerve exactly begins so every uh cranial nerve is going to obviously begin in your brain and more specifically for the glossopharyngeal nerve it begins in the uh, medulla oblongata all right medulla is a part of the hindbrain and from there it has a couple of nuclei that i want you to remember for now these will be further elaborated in your neuroanatomy course but i want over here i'm just going to give you a brief overview of all of these uh, the nuclei I want you to remember is the first nucleus ambiguous, inferior salivatory nucleus, nucleus of tractus solitarius, spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve, right? So these are the four nucleus associated with the glossopharyngeal nerve and I want you to remember these fibers. Uh, these fibers are also known as the functional components of this glossopharyngeal nerve. I just want to give you an overview of what your glossopharyngeal nerve is basically going to supply. The glossopharyngeal nerve is going to give motor supply to the stylopharyngeus. Then it is going to give gustatory supply which is also known as the taste supply to the tongue. Uh, posterior one third of the tongue along with that the circumvallate papillae of the tongue next it supplies uh, sensory sensations on the posterior one third of the tongue and the palatine tonsil then it has parasympathetic secretomotor fiber for the parotid gland and then it finally gives supply to your carotid sinus carotid body these are basically receptors located at the bifurcation of internal and external carotid artery right these are the major supplies so somehow with these uh, functional components we have to supply these areas first we have the special visceral efferent fibers whenever there's a word efferent means it's going somewhere to give something some supply and whenever there's the word a afferent mentioned it means it's taking the supply from some place and taking it to uh, its destined area the special visceral efferent these in other words are the motor fibers of the glossopharyngeal nerve these are going to supply the motor fibers to what where did, is the motor supply needed obviously to the muscle and the only muscle the ninth nerve supplies is 9sp the stylopharyngeus muscle next we have the special visceral afferent fibers now these are the kind of fibers that are taking uh, a specific signal to the brain not bringing it so if something's taking that means it has to be either sensation or it has to be the other function that i just talked about the taste so these are the taste fibers or the gustatory fibers these are basically going to travel from the posterior one third of the tongue and the papillae these are going to be the taste fibers the next what we have is the general visceral efferent fibers once again we need to supply an area so in this case these are going to supply the parotid gland and what do we supply the parotid gland we can't supply normal fibers the ninth nerve supplies secretomotor or parasympathetic fibers to the parotid gland via the otic ganglion and hence these are the parasympathetic fibers and we have the general visceral afferents these are again taking so it has to be sensory sensation that it's taking to the brain so these are sensory fibers to the tongue to the tonsil to the carotids from the carotid sinus carotid body right so these are the sensory fibers and finally we have the general somatic afferents these are bringing a general sensation from the ear and proprioceptive fibers to the stylopharyngeus muscle. So these are the various functional components of the glossopharyngeal nerve that you should have an idea of for head and neck. But in neuroanatomy, you go into the depth of this. Now I want you to remember uh, what each uh, fiber is linked to which nucleus over here. Just want you to remember that the tractus solitarius nucleus is always gonna be linked with the taste, along with that, the sensation, all right? The motor fibers are always gonna be linked up with the nucleus ambiguous. The parasympathetic fibers which is secretomotor because par parotid gland secretes saliva so obviously these fibers are going to be linked to the inferior salivatory nucleus and finally the general somatic afferents these are linked up to the uh, trigeminal nerve spinal nucleus right so basically what they're trying to say is that special visceral efferents uh, these bring fibers from the nucleus ambiguous and they go and go to the stylopharyngeus the special visceral afferents they what they do is take 
taste to the tractus solitarius nucleus. So that's how it works. And then the general visceral efferents to parotid gland, these begin from the inferior salivary nucleus. The general visceral efferents, these are basically going to take sensation to the tractus solitarius. And these are going to take, because they're afferents, they're going to take, they're going to be linked up to the spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve. So uh, that is a basic intracranial perspective of our uh, glossopharyngeal nerve. Now let's talk about uh, what exactly is the course of the trigeminal nerve and what branches it gives, all right? So let's talk about uh, how the glossopharyngeal nerve is going to take its course. We all know that it originates in the medulla oblongata with those four uh, different nuclei. The glossopharyngeal nerve is a mixed nerve. Why? Because it's carrying so many different types of fibers, right? The ones we just studied. Uh, it, ca it carries motor fibers, parasympathetic fibers, taste fibers, sensation fibers, right? So, many so it's a mixed nerve, basically. And all of these fibers are confined to this, this one nerve. All these tiny, tiny fibers are present in this one nerve known as the glossopharyngeal nerve, right? So now let's talk about what happens uh, when it leaves your medulla oblongata. When it leaves the medulla oblongata, uh, to exit the cranial cavity, we have the jugular foramen from where the ninth nerve exits, right? Inside the jugular foramen, it has a ganglion called the superior ganglion and below the jugular foramen, it makes a ganglion called the inferior ganglion. It leaves the cranium. The glossopharyngeal nerve now, it's going to course between the internal carotid and internal jugular vein for a while, after which it will course between the internal carotid and external carotid artery, after which it will terminate when it turns towards the tongue, tongue and tonsillar area. This is the tonsil and the tongue. Over here, it just terminates, right, to uh, form the dorsal and lingual branches. All right, that's the basic course and termination of the glossopharyngeal nerve. Let's talk about the branches it gives. So first branch that the glossopharyngeal nerve gives is known as a Jacobson's or tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve. This has another name called Jacobson's nerve, but even if you remember tympanic, that's good enough. So guys, first thing it does is that uh, the tympanic branch goes into the middle ear. This is the middle ear cavity right here. Over here, there is this huge plexus being formed. Plexus means a collection of nerves called the tympanic plexus. From the tympanic plexus, a nerve arises from the tympanic plexus known as the lesser petrusal nerve. Now, this is something that you all, I'm sure, remember. It is linked up to the otic ganglion. Otic ganglion finally will, uh, through the auriculotemporal nerve, will go into the parotid gland. Basically, fibers, secretomotor fibers of the ninth glossopharyngeal nerve have uh, eventually reached the parotid gland. So, our first area of supply or our first function, which was parasympathetic function, is now complete because it has reached its area of supply, the parotid gland. Right. Next uh, branch is the muscular branch for the stylopharyngeus muscle. So there it goes. Here it has given its fibers. And now we've also completed our motor function of the nerve. Glossopharyngeal nerve also gives a pharyngeal branch for the pharyngeal plexus. Uh, if you remember, we studied in the pharynx. It goes there and supplies whatever it has to. And then it gives a carotid branch for the carotid sinus and carotid body. These are basically receptors present at the bifurcation. These two are going to control oxygen levels and blood pressure. Uh, these are responsible for it. So someone has to supply them, right? So it is uh, the glossopharyngeal nerve fibers are supplying them. Uh, then the taste fibers are going to be carried from the posterior one third of the tongue and the circumvallate papilla. So do not forget the taste fibers are not only coming from the posterior one third of the tongue, but also the circumvallate papilla. That is a mistake usually people make. So these are going to also uh, be a part of your uh, lingual branches. The lingual branches it gives, they are going to be traveling within them. The taste function has been completed. The sensory function, again, from the posterior third of the tongue, uh, from the tonsil. So all of this, these are also traveling in tonsillar branches of the glossopharyngeal nerve. And the rest of the function, including the carotid sinus and body, have been addressed as well. And that is all we needed to know about the origin, course, termination, the branches of the glossopharyngeal nerve extracranially. Now, if there is any lesion to the glossopharyngeal nerve, what do you think is going to happen? Obviously, it's quite anticipated that one of these sensations is going to be gone to one of these areas that we studied. So, uh, the, uh, there will be paralysis of the styrofringus muscle. There will be a uh, lack of secretion from the protein gland. Decrease in the formation of saliva. You will lose taste sensation in the posterior third of your tongue. 
sensations will be lost in the posterior third of the tongue in the tonsillar area in the pharynx right so these are all the things it's quite predictable what will happen if the glossopharyngeal nerve is paralyzed so guys that was all you needed to know about the glossopharyngeal nerve i really hope that made a lot of sense it's not a lot but if you study with me it's always going to be easy so do not forget to subscribe to my channel and thank you so much for watching